Okay, so we are going to look at a practice problem on conservation of energy. And this is one out of your discussion materials. And it's uh, problem number three, I guess, um, if you add the conceptual one in there. It tells us that a water skier lets go of a tow rope upon leaving the end of a jump at a speed of 14 meters per second, um, as the drawing indicates, and I'll redraw that in a minute. The skier has a speed of 13 meters per second, the highest point of the jump. Ignoring air resistance, so no external forces, determine the skier's height above the ramp of the, the ramp's highest point. So let's draw the picture that is shown. So here's our skier's ramp, and here's the skier, and the idea is that they would follow a, well, that is a horrible parabola. A parabola so is like a, a projectile being shot at an angle in the, vertical, in the upward direction. And here's our skier at the peak. Okay, so that's our situation. And the question is asking how high above the ramp does the skier get? Now, sounds awfully familiar to kinematics. And I mean, I'm told that the speed that the skier is going off at 14 meters per second and, and he's moving vertically and horizontally. I'm not getting the angle of the ramp, but I also know his velocity at this point is 13 meters per second. So I could, I could solve this with kinematics. I could set an origin and I could look at my knowns and I could recognize this as two-dimensional motion and well, then I could also recognize that once he leaves that ramp, the only thing acting on him is forces so I could um, appreciate that it's, you know, he's traveling in the vertical direction and this might be solvable doing kinematics. Well, that's the power of thinking about the conservation of energy. And usually at this point in life, people get really mad at me because what would have taken like three boards worth of work, we can do in one step. If we recognize this as conservation of energy, if we're going to do that, we have to recognize that the energy state of this object exists. That's pretty clear. We can tell that it exists. And we need to define, well, what's the beginning and what's the end so that we can look at conservation through that time. So we do want to define the initial, when do I start caring, very similar to kinematics, and the final. Well, the initial is when he goes off the ramp. So recognizing, all right, what's his energy state at that point? The final is when he hits the peak. Okay, well, what's the energy state at that point? All right, well, with an energy problem, we need to think about mechanical energy, kinetic, and potential. He's moving, so he's going to have some kinetic energy, and he's changing his height, so he's going to have some potential energy. And part of our process that we're going to develop for defining potential energy, I mentioned earlier, was defining a height equal to zero. So since I'm interested in how high above that ramp he is, I'm going to set that ramp equal to zero. Not to mention I have no idea how high the ramp is. So if I were to set the water equal to zero, I, I don't know this, this height. So I don't even have that information. So I'm going to set my height equal to zero at the ramp itself. Might be where we would have set the origin if we were looking at a kinematics problem. All right, so let's look at conservation of energy. We have total initial energy is going to equal our total final energy. The initial is when he goes off the ramp. Well, that's going to be his initial kinetic plus his initial, that is two initial kinetic, plus his initial potential. And that has to equal his final kinetic plus his final potential. Well, my initial kinetic energy is going to be one half his mass times its initial velocity squared, and my initial potential energy is going to be his mass times gravity times his initial height. And my final kinetic energy is one half the mass times the final speed squared plus the mass times the gravity times the final height. All right. Well, I want that final height. Do I know everything else? Yeah, it turns out I do. One half the mass. Oh, I don't have the mass. Well, Let's just keep going and see if it matters in this case. One half the mass times the initial speed. Well, he's going 
14 meters per second. Now this is speed, which kinetic energy cares about. It doesn't matter that he's going off at an angle. He has a certain speed, and it's 14 meters per second. Now if I were doing kinematics, I'd have to break that up into horizontal and vertical velocities and analyze them independently. But in the case of energy, I just care how fast he's going. So one half the mass times the speed squared plus his mass. I know G, that's 9.8. And what's his initial height? Oh, well, I set that equal to zero. That's going to help us out. All right, plus one half the mass times his final speed. Well, I'm told at the top he's going 13 meters per second. It's purely horizontally. The speed that changed was in, the, or the velocity that changed was in the vertical direction. If he's going up, he's going to slow down to a vertical velocity of zero. That would help in kinematics, but I just need the speed. And he's going 13 meters per second. All right, so that's squared plus m g n. That h final is the height that I'm interested in the problem, and in the problem it's determined as capital H. Well, I have a lot of m's here. I have an m in every term. So if I divide, now this is where you got to be really careful about your algebra. If I divide everything by m, they're all going to cancel out. So that's nice. So I'm left with 1 half 14 squared. Oops. So 0.5 times 14 squared. That's 98. Plus, well, that's 0, so that goes to 0. Equals 1 half 13 squared. 84.5. Plus 9.8 times capital H. So I bring my 84.5 should be zero onto the other side. So 98 minus 84.5, and I get 13.5 equals 9.8 times the height. Divide that by 9.8, and I get my height equal to 1.38 meters. Pretty fast, pretty quick, and pretty slick if I think about energy. This would have taken the entire board if we thought about kinematics and then had to think about maybe some forces. Just thinking about energy. His energy can't change. And if his energy can't change, I can use that power to look at what's his energy when I start caring, what's his energy when I stop caring, and apply my conservation of energy principle. Remembering, keeping in mind, we have to identify that height equal to zero. All right, good job.